Hello and welcome to another TLDR US video. While there's been a lot of debate about whether the US should legalize cannabis nationally, there's been less debate about whether or not legalization has, so far, been successful in the states who've permitted it. Were those who were advocating for the legalization proved right that it would increase tax revenue, decrease crime and improve public health? Or were those opposing it right? Has it led to increased drug and alcohol use, more crimes and worse public health? Well, let's have a look at the data. Before we start, if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing or backing us on Patreon. In return for your Patreon support, you can get a whole bunch of perks, from early access to videos and the ability to vote on video topics, to exclusive TLDR live streams, behind the scenes posts and your name in videos. Find out more about what you can get by clicking the link in the description. We're going to take a look at four different areas to see whether cannabis legalization has been a success. Cannabis use, crime, vehicle fatalities, and increased tax revenue. When it comes to the actual impacts of cannabis, it's safe to say that there's far from a consensus. Research into the decriminalization and medical cannabis legislation has drawn conflicting conclusions. Now, some of you may be arguing that the rate of drug use per se isn't a problem. Of course, the legalization of medical cannabis will lead to increased use. Those with medical ailments who could benefit from it are going to use it. The potential problem area is overuse and use by minors. Early analysis of cannabis legalization on usage by college students at Washington State University showed a significant increase in use after legalization that was explicitly larger than would have been predicted by national trends, with the increase as large for underage students as those of legal age. This is a problem because it's believed that cannabis is dangerous when used by adolescents as their brains haven't fully developed. However, studies have yielded conflicting results on this, ranging from the regular use as a minor leading to an average loss of 8 IQ points to having no real significant impact at all. Aside from the direct harm, you also have to consider related injuries caused by the effects of cannabis consumption. The legalization of cannabis in Colorado saw a pronounced and significant increase in adolescent cannabis-associated emergency department and urgent care visits. So, all in all, the data is quite unclear on whether cannabis use, especially in adolescents, has caused harm post-legalization. But what about its effect on crime? Well, a 2014 paper based on US state panel data looked at whether medical cannabis legalization actually posed a threat to public health and safety. The belief being that cannabis could become a gateway drug, pushing people to commit more serious predatory crimes to support their habits. However, the paper didn't actually find any link between MML and higher crime rates, and pointed to a potential fall when it comes to homicide and assault rates. This was confirmed by a separate study in 2016, which reported that there was no evidence of significant negative spillover effects from MML on crime, including traffic safety, youth drug use patterns, or suicide rates. In fact, the study reported significant drops in the rates of violent crimes associated with state MMLs. Taking a more holistic view, others have found that there's no statistically significant difference in property crime rates, violent crime rates, murder, rape, robbery, or motor vehicle theft rates in states which had decriminalized cannabis. Rates actually appeared to be lower for all of these crimes, with an exception of robbery. Another argument for legalization revolves around freeing up police time. Instead of them spending time cautioning personal drug users, they can actually go out and catch the burglars, fraudsters, and murderers that are causing far more societal damage and impact. In Colorado and Washington in particular, a 2019 study looked at the crime clearance rate between 2010 and 2015. The study found that in the context of legalization, there were no negative effects on crime clearance rates, with evidence seeming to suggest that some crime clearance rates actually improved, giving some credence to the aforementioned argument. But it's all well and good to say that the police are solving more crimes, but did the crime rates in Washington and Colorado go up after legalizing cannabis? 
As this chart shows, both states track the US average for violent crimes prior to legislation. In Colorado, this has begun to increase significantly in recent years, with violent crime actually going above the national average in 2018. In Washington, violent crime rates seem to track the national average, with no significant change suggesting that legalizing cannabis has had no real impact here. Of course, this isn't the case in all states. In Maine and Nevada, violent crime plummeted, and in Alaska and Massachusetts, it skyrocketed. However, these are all exceptions, and generally there's been no marked difference. Also, it's hard to directly attribute these changes to cannabis legalization. Getting a bit more specific now, let's take a look at vehicle fatalities. While it's useful to look at general crime and violent crime, there's competing arguments about vehicle fatalities. One school of thought is that with more people taking drugs, then it's likely that there'll be more drug drivers and thus more fatalities. The counter argument is that if people are substituting alcohol for cannabis, then there will be fewer accidents. Again, look at Washington and Colorado. In 2015, analysis of data from the US Fatality Analysis Reporting System found no statistically significant difference when it comes to motor vehicle fatalities, compared to states who haven't legalized cannabis. However, another study in 2018 went on to report a non-significant increase. The actual data shown in the graph demonstrates the point made by the former paper, that there's no real difference in fatal crashes between either state and the US average. In most states, this is also the case, with no real difference being measured. However, in some states like Oregon, fatalities did begin to increase following legislation. This isn't the overall trend though. So while many states have not seen an increase in fatalities following legislation, there are exceptions. The point we're making is that the data isn't consistent enough for us to definitely say either way. Finally then, let's take a look at the impact cannabis legalization has had on tax revenue. It's important to note that enforcing laws on cannabis costs money. Just stopping enforcing the laws alone therefore saves police departments money. Depending on who you ask, the cost of enforcing cannabis possession laws in the US are estimated to cost between 3.6 billion US dollars on the low end to 7.7 .7 billion on the higher end. In addition to this, you can impose further taxes on purchasing cannabis if you legalize it. These taxes can additionally bring in a rather large amount of money to the states. Colorado currently brings in around $20 million a month just from recreational cannabis sales. And in the first year of legalization in Washington, they raised 70 million, twice the amount originally predicted. In fact, there's even evidence that in some cases, tax revenue from cannabis not only exceeds original expectations, but also continues to increase as time goes on, as shown by these graphs. It's hard to argue then that tax revenue hasn't been a success in the states that have legalized cannabis. Ultimately though, the overall picture of the effects of cannabis legalization is unfortunately unclear. In cannabis use, crimes and vehicle fatalities, there's contradictory evidence that makes it hard for us to definitively say whether legalizing cannabis has made any real difference either way. On the taxation front though, there's little to suggest that legalization hasn't been a success. Huge amounts of money have been collected by states that have legalized cannabis, and in some cases, even more money than was originally predicted. But is this argument enough to overcome some of the concerns that people have had about increased cannabis use, crime, and vehicle fatalities? And are those concerns even valid? Or do you think that the data so far suggests that there's very little to worry about? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.